Picture, if you will, a serene landscape, a place where peace is not just a concept, but a tangible reality. A place where the air brims with tranquility, where the soft whispers of leaves rustling in the wind echo God's gentle words of love. Imagine a brook, its waters flowing freely, nonchalantly dancing down the path laid by the Creator Himself. It's a testament to life's fluidity, to its constant motion, even amidst the stillness. In the heart of this serenity, the beauty of nature sings a melody of divine love, the vibrant chirping of birds, the rustle of leaves under a gentle breeze, the rhythmic ebb and flow of ocean waves, all are verses in the grand hymn of His creation. It's in these moments of peaceful solitude that we can truly perceive the echo of God's love, resonating in every corner of the universe. Let us remember the verse from Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. This verse is not merely a statement, but an invitation for us to experience God's presence in the stillness, in the calm before. It's a calling to quiet our minds, to silence the clamor of our worries and fears, and to tune into the symphony of peace that God orchestrates in our lives. God's love, like the serene landscape, is ever-present, ever-peaceful. It's a love that doesn't fade with the setting sun or wane with the changing seasons. It's a love that remains constant like the northern star, guiding us through our darkest nights and leading us back to the path of peace. So in the stillness of this moment, let's take a deep breath. Let's feel the cool breeze, hear the soft rustle of leaves, and see the gentle dance of the brook. Let's immerse ourselves in the serenity of God's creation and in the tranquility of His love. In the midst of turmoil, God invites us to find peace in His presence. So let's accept His invitation and experience the calm before, the calm before the storm, before the dawn, before the promise. For in this calm, God is still working, still loving, still guiding us through every season of our lives. Yet storms come, they crash into our lives, uninvited, bringing chaos and uncertainty. They're the unforeseen trials and tribulations that shake our foundations, making life feel like a ship tossed in a raging sea. We all face these storms. It might be the loss of a loved one, an unexpected illness, financial hardship, or the pain of betrayal. These are the moments when our faith is tested, when our resolve is pushed to its limits, when we question whether we are strong enough to weather the storm. But in the heart of these storms, we find a truth that has been echoed through the ages, a truth that can bring peace to our troubled hearts. It is a truth found in the pages of the Bible, in the words of Jesus himself. In the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus tells his disciples, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. These words were not spoken lightly, they were spoken by someone who knew the depths of human suffering, who had felt the sting of betrayal, who had faced the storm head on. Jesus knew what it was to suffer, and he promises us that we too can overcome. We can find peace amidst the chaos, hope amidst the despair, because he has overcome the world. It's easy to feel alone in the midst of a storm. It's easy to feel like you're fighting an uphill battle, like there's no end in sight. But remember the words of Jesus. Remember that he has overcome the world. This doesn't mean that we won't face hardships or struggles. It doesn't mean that the storm will magically disappear, but it does mean that we have someone on our side, someone who knows our pain, who has walked in our shoes. In our struggles, we are not alone. God is with us, working in ways we may not see. He is the unseen hand guiding us through the storm, the quiet voice whispering words of comfort in our ear. He is the light in the darkness, the hope in our despair. Even in the midst of the storm, God is still working. In the midst of the storm, there is a shelter, a refuge that stands firm. In life, storms are inevitable. They come in different forms and intensity. It could be a raging tempest of financial crisis, an unending downpour of emotional turmoil, or a thunderous roar of health issues. We've all been there, haven't we? But here's the good news. In the midst of these storms, there is a shelter. There is a refuge that stands firm, that doesn't waver or falter under the fierce winds or torrential rain. This shelter is not made of bricks and mortar, not made of wood or stone. It is not a physical place, but a spiritual one. It's a place of solace, a place of peace, a place of rest. It's a place where the howling winds of life's storms can't reach us. This shelter, this refuge is God. 
There's a beautiful verse in the Bible that captures this perfectly. Psalm 91, 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. This verse is a declaration, a statement of faith and trust in God. It's a testament to God's unwavering character, his steadfast love, and his enduring promise to be our shelter in the midst of life's storms. When we say God is my refuge and my fortress, we're not just saying that he's a place to hide. No, we're saying that he's a place of safety, a place of protection. We're saying that he is our stronghold, our bulwark against the storms. We're saying that in him we can find rest, we can find peace, we can find hope. So no matter how fierce the storm, no matter how dark the clouds, no matter how strong the winds, remember this, God is your shelter, he is your refuge, he is your fortress, and in him you can trust. Even in our darkest hours, God is our refuge, our shelter from the storm. And then the dawn breaks. The storm has passed and we are left standing stronger than before. It is in the quiet aftermath, in the first rays of sunlight piercing the lingering darkness, that we truly come to understand the depth of our resilience. In the midst of the storm, it may have felt like we were being tossed about, battered by the wind and rain. But it is important to remember that it is the storm that gives us the strength to fly. It is the storm that pushes us, tests us. And ultimately, it is the storm that shapes us. There's a verse in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31, that says, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This verse isn't just a promise. It's a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, to the strength that lies within each and every one of us, given to us by our Creator. Imagine for a moment an eagle soaring high above the ground. It does not fight against the wind, but instead it uses the wind to lift it higher. It uses the storm to its advantage. And so, in the same way, we too can use the storms of life to lift us higher, to make us stronger, to help us soar. We may not see it in the heat of the moment, but every storm we weather, every trial we endure is an opportunity for growth. It's a chance for us to learn, to adapt, to become more resilient. And it's in these moments when we feel at our weakest that we often find our greatest strength. After the storm, we find ourselves not broken, but built stronger. We discover that we are capable of weathering the storm, of standing firm in the face of adversity. And we realize that even in the midst of the storm, even when we can't see it, God is still working. After the storm, we find ourselves not broken, but built stronger. God is still working even when we don't see it. So what is the promise in all of this? What is the message that we need to hear? At times it might feel as if we've been left to face the storm alone. Yet amidst the tumult and the chaos, there's a promise that we can hold on to. A promise that comes not from the world, but from a power far greater. The promise of God's unending presence in our lives. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 8, we find these comforting words. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. This is the promise that we have been given, that even in our darkest hours we are not alone. God is there going before us, guiding us through the trials and tribulations of life. He is there in the stillness and the calm and in the storm and the chaos. He is there in every season of our lives, working in ways that we may not always understand, but can always trust. His presence isn't contingent on our circumstances. It's not dependent on whether we're struggling or succeeding, whether we're in the valley or on the mountaintop. His presence is constant. His work in our lives unwavering. This promise isn't just about the assurance of his presence. It's about the transformation that his work brings about in us. Through the seasons of life, God is shaping us, molding us, helping us grow into the individuals he designed us to be. His work in us isn't always comfortable. It may not always be easy, but it is always purposeful. So when the times get tough, when the storm seems too great to bear, remember this promise, cling to it. Let it be your anchor in the storm, your beacon in the darkness. Remember, no matter what season you're in, God is still working. He is with you, guiding you and helping you grow. Fear not, for you are not alone.